Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Five Mobile App Trends and What They Mean for Dev and Testing. Before we begin, I'd like to cover three housekeeping items for our viewers. First, at the bottom of your audience console, you'll find a number of widgets for questions and additional resources. When you have questions for the presenter during the webcast, click on the Q&A widget and submit your question. We will answer as many questions as possible at the end of the webinar, and if we run out of time, we'll get back to you via email. Second, if you need any tech support during the webinar, please use the help option. Third and finally, a copy of today's slide deck is available in the resources section at the bottom of your screen. We will also email you a link to the recording of this webinar within the next few hours. With that, I'll introduce our presenters for today's broadcast, Aran Kinsberner, Chief Evangelist, Product Manager, and Author here at Perfecto by Perforce, joined by Karthik KK, test automation expert, instructor, and founder of Execute Automation. Aran, I will pass it off to you first. Thanks for joining us on today's broadcast. Thank, Thank you, you, Sherby. Uh, and uh, uh, welcome, everyone, uh, to today's webinar. I'm truly excited to uh, talk with all of you today about uh, what's heading our way uh, in the mobile technology space. I'm truly privileged to have with me Karthik uh, from Execute Automation. As mentioned by Shelby, I am a chief evangelist, author, and product manager at Perfecto, which is a performance company over 20 years in the industry. Uh, and uh, you can find me you know, all over the place. Uh, Karthik, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aran. Thank you for having me for this great conference. Uh, can you say just a word about yourself, for those of you who are not familiar? Oh, sure, Aran. Thank you so much. So, uh, uh, yeah, so I've been into this automation. So, yeah, my name is Karthi KK, and I've been into this automation testing for almost like 14 years. Uh, and I've been working with many different tools and technologies, and I really love doing uh, testing and also uh, working with these automation testing tools from the start of uh, the Mercury uh, uh, QTP to all the way to uh, the current Perforce and uh, modern tech. And it's it's really exciting to, uh, to work with these tools. Every time I see new tech comes in, AI is coming. I'm really excited about it. And I've been working on these things. And that's why I built this Exit Automation platform to cover all these toolings. That's, that's about me. I mean, yeah. You can, yeah. Sure. Thank, thank, thank you, Karthik. And uh, I, I can tell you myself, I've uh, followed your work uh, over the past uh, few years. Uh, so thank you for contributing to the community, to the industry, with all of your training activities uh, and blogs. Uh, and uh, today, even though uh, you know uh, both of us are deep in so many technologies, today's webinar mm -hmm. is going to be very much focused on the mobile. Uh, testing landscape, some of the uh, growing trends that we are seeing, some of the technologies, frameworks, uh, such as uh, application clips, APKS, Flutter framework, progressive web applications, and uh, appendix. This is a bonus for uh, the guys online, uh, a full-blown testing strategy for foldable smartphones, which are already in the, in the market. Uh, we are not able to cover them today because you know we have a plenty uh, uh, of uh, yeah. content that we have prepared together. But I didn't want uh, the audience to miss on uh, this uh, complimentary uh, content. So for those of you online, you're going to see in the resources uh, a section for foldable testing strategy, which you're not going to cover. With that, let's jump jump in into uh, mobile apps and uh, Karthik, Let's just uh, take it, take it away and uh, give us, you know, your take on mobile applications testing, Flutter framework, Appium, and many more. Sure, sure, and thank you so much for that. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think the mobile apps as a whole, while we started doing this testing, is actually categorized into these uh, three types, uh, especially like the mobile apps, uh, like native mobile apps and the hybrid mobile apps. And these are the mobile apps which are currently playing a key role. And uh, they are very, uh, very awesome in their own sense, but they actually have some advantages and few, uh, few gaps when it comes to uh, their own uh, competitor in terms of the types. Uh, so the one thing which I really like about, uh, I mean, let's see this native app and hybrid app in, in, in general. So basically, uh, these apps, like the native apps, or uh, created based on specific platforms such as like iOS, Android, or Tizen. So we target 
writing the code on these platforms uh, and we write uh, the uh, the code for these platforms, especially the iOS, Android, and Tizen, and some of the uh, tech or like the Xamarin, Flutter, React uh, Native, and the uh, Ionic and the PhoneGap. So these applications basically are uh, built to support running applications natively on these uh, platforms. And whereas the hybrid app are a bit different, I mean, they are not specifically targeted uh, for these uh, platforms, uh, but just that they will be running on a top of the native app. So basically like hybrid apps or something which are uh, like they are responsive to the platform, but they also run on the top, something like a web view or like a browser view on the iOS or in the Android. And PWA, the progressive web app, is one of the another attempt to make this mobile app more accessible than browser because you can do like a clip uh, on your um, on the home screen and then you can uh, start instantly. And also there will be some services running behind the scene to update the uh, events, uh, something like that. So it's pretty much like not like browser basically, but it is even more responsive than the actual browser-based application. So that's why these hybrid apps are very good in terms of the resource usage, the memory usage, and everything. So yeah, so these are the two types of application we currently have uh, at the moment in the uh, in the market. And there are many tech uh, which are playing on these different uh, uh, types. And uh, the mobile app testing tools uh, on these types of application types is especially very, very uh, useful while we do the testing on these platforms. Some of them are like uh, the most popular, I would say, is Appium. It's like Selenium of web application testing, and Appium is for the mobile. And Asperzo, XUIT test, uh, Xamarin.UI test, Flutter driver, and Perfecto. I mean, I'm not going to really talk about Perfecto a lot because the guru of Perfecto is uh, with us. So uh, Iran is going to talk to uh, us about it a lot. Uh, but these are the toolings which we have at the moment on the mobile app testing tools, which are the key uh, in terms of how we can test these different application types on different platforms. Uh, and I... I, I could probably go through all these testing tools a bit by bit, uh, but we can really generalize or cover uh, in even more depth when it comes to the sophisticated platforms and how we can test them in a better way, uh, which uh, I guess, uh, Aaron, you're going to help me with that on that. Oh. So, yeah, thank you for that. All right. So the Appium. So as I told, like, the Appium is the most popular testing tool for mobile and it supports many different uh, language bindings uh, like C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, PHP, Ruby, and whatever language that you name it. And it is uh, very, very uh, easy to get started automating your applications. Uh, and it runs on different platforms like Windows, Mac, and Linux. And it also has a, a desktop client which can run on Mac. Uh, I mean, if you don't really are familiar with writing programs, you can just uh, you know, install your APK files or IPA file, and then you can set the variables, and then you can start, and it will automatically launch on the device that you have specified, and then it start running the test. And Appium is so much extendable that it can also be, it is also being extended to different platforms or testing tools like uh, Test Project, for example, and Catalan Studio, SAS Labs, and more. And uh, these companies are also contributing directly to Appium project, uh, and uh, they have also extended their uh, functionality or leveraged the functionality to be extended even more further. And there are some AI-related works going on in Appium side uh, where they have also extended the Appium uh, to, to support uh, like an image recognition uh, kind of stuff. Uh, so those things are also very exciting in Appium side. So Appium is basically like a, a better tool for automating uh, your application uh, in a nutshell. And the next tool that we're going to talk about is the uh, is the Flutter driver. Uh, so the Flutter driver is actually uh, very limited at the moment in terms of like covering many different uh, platforms to be automated. Uh, in terms of the application side, like how Appium does. But uh, Flutter is very, very specific to the Flutter 
based applications. So Flutter is a is a modern new tooling. I can talk about that in our uh, upcoming slide. But Flutter driver is evolving and it's getting better and better in terms of testing the Flutter application itself. And it, it supports automating applications on Mac and Windows and Linux, again, because uh, it's developed by Google and they know the pain of going through an application built on a specific platform. They made Flutter driver uh, and the Flutter itself to run on cross platforms and it makes developers life much easier with all those uh, pain points in the existing platforms. And Flutter driver actually is, I mean, the code that we write uh, as a client library is going to be on the Dart programming language. And again, it is pretty close to Java language. So if you are familiar with Java, then uh, Dart programming language is no different with that. And uh, the right hand side, you can see that uh, there is a small code snippet, like how the code has to be written. And it, it looks pretty much like the normal programming language that we use, like Java, or JavaScript, uh, and there is no big difference between both of them. So yeah, that's what is the uh, Flutter driver. But uh, again, this is Flutter driver just for testing purpose that we're talking about. But if we uh, see the Flutter itself, the Flutter actually has got a, uh, a lot of features, basically, like... Mm, Oops, I can't able to click this thing to oh. get these. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. So, um, so Flutter is a, as I told, it's a, it's a multi-platform framework, and was uh, released uh, in 2018 as a stable build by Google. And uh, initially, it was supporting just like iOS and Android uh, in the Flutter, but now they also support like like web and also the uh, desktop as well as the embedded devices. Uh, so basically Flutter is more like a uh, like an emulation layer which runs like a uh, virtual operating system on the top of any platforms and they create their own canvases and then they create their own components run on the top of the canvas. And that's the reason Flutter actually is native to the application uh, to the platform they are running in because they have their own native components everything running on the top of the virtual layer on the canvas and it's it's super fast and it it, it is like 120 fps we can also develop the 120 fps application uh on the flutter so flutter basically is like i can keep talking about flutter it's it's like a whole uh length video it will take <laughs> automatically so i'm not really going to go into the flutter details but but flutter is really really awesome uh and yeah it's it's pretty good in terms of how you can actually uh, work with the Flutter itself and develop the application. So uh, I'm not sure how this this okay. So uh, as you as you can see again in a nutshell, like Flutter is a free open source project developed by Google and it is maintained by Dart. Uh, I mean uses Dart programming language. It is fast, smooth, and capable of running 120 FPS app. Um, and since it has its own widget, it is highly customizable. So all those things that we discussed in our earlier slide, these are what the uh, Flutter is all about. Just one comment, Karthik. Uh, I, I played a bit with uh, with Flutter, and I think while it's growing and it's evolving, actually I'm working with a few customers of mine that are looking at Flutter, so it's obviously emerging. Uh, but what I've learned is that uh, while Flutter is so cool and it build, it uh, helps build, you know, very good, uh, high-looking uh, UI applications, you know, native uh, UI applications on mobile, uh, it does have some limitations as it only supports or tests the, test the uh, application, you know, within the application context. If you want to test things outside of the application, application. like uh, yes. changing settings, uh, Flutter is limited, so Flutter can only test Flutter, Flutter native uh, framework can only test within the app. So that's kind of a limitation that I am sure will be resolved as Flutter becomes more mature. You're right. You're right, Aaron. Actually, for past uh, past two years, I've been waiting for this feature to come in, like because we we develop an app uh, in in New Zealand here, uh, which runs uh, which has a, a web view come through uh, uh, for 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 performing a sign in kind of stuff, but we can't really do it using the Flutter driver because it doesn't really support the web view or the browser view within the Flutter. So basically, Flutter driver does support only the native functionality, and still now there is no. Uh, 
update come in. So you're right. Uh, I, I'm just crossing my finger probably next year. Um, yeah, we should have this feature coming in soon. Yeah, but, but thanks for bringing it up. Yes, that's something. There is a limitation on the Flutter driver side. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So let's talk about the uh, advantages of uh, the Flutter. Again, I think we covered about these things a lot, but just in a high-level nutshell, you can see that Flutter is a super fast uh, uh, platform, I mean, programming language, since it has its own uh, widget, and it's uh, it doesn't really use a JavaScript bridge because any, any um, uh, application that you take, let's say, Ionic, or the React Native, they use as the, uh, what is called as a JavaScript bridge, which is used by many cross-platform apps to develop the SDK and make the code execution faster in any platform. And as I told, like Flutter is actually uh, like a virtual machine, which is running on the top of a platform, and it uses its own canvas to render and uh, uh, handle its own uh, APIs, and it then calls the native call uh, to perform the action on the uh, on the application itself or on the platform itself. It is really really faster, uh, and that's why everything Flutter team has written is from the from the from the ground up to handle these operation on the platforms. Uh, whereas the other programming language does use the JavaScript bridge uh, to perform those actions, and that's why they are uh, kind of uh, slower. Uh, or maybe even if they are faster, uh, uh, they won't be as perfect, as smooth as Flutter itself. And Flutter has uh, something like hot reload options, and now it is kind of uh, supported in many other programming languages uh, as well, or many other platforms as well, even React Native has that, uh, which makes the changes of the app pretty visual without going through so many builds. You can just you now do Control S, and it will save, and it will automatically reload on the uh, emulator or the real device that you are working with. The application will be reflected there. Uh, the changes of the application will be reflected there. And Flutter uses a Dart programming language. As I told, the language is pretty similar to uh, C Sharp or Java or JavaScript. Yeah. So there are many features you can go ahead and see online. Uh, you can read the documentation. It is pretty cool, and that's that's Flutter is all about. So we have seen all these platforms like uh, automation testing using Appium or Flutter Driver. But in general, I, I really like this particular code. In general, short is better. If you can encapsulate your ideas into a single capitative sentence, you are halfway home. So I have, uh, I think we, we wrote, me and, me and Aaron wrote this especially for one of the important contexts. And that context is nothing but the a way how we can actually do a uh, testing of the application in a more concise fashion. And uh, and this one is something I really think that, uh, Iran, you can probably give us uh, a wide uh, idea on what we are, we are really going to talk about. Awesome. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, uh, uh, Karthik, for talking about Appium and Flutter and, you know, the mobile landscape and the uh, uh, we're going to now dive a bit even deeper into uh, what's coming uh, in, you know, the mobile native apps. You talk about mobile native, you talk about PWA, you talk about hybrid applications. We're going to take mm -hmm. it even to the next level and see how things are evolving uh, as we are wrapping uh, 2020. So yeah. uh, before we dive into the advanced features of mobile that are trending, uh, I wanted to just put in front of the audience, uh, in my mind, a very high level, but quite uh, taken from uh, my personal experience, how you would build a test, uh, a test plan for any mobile application, whether it's native or hybrid, it doesn't matter. You want to make sure that you're covering uh, from a functionality perspective, all the business flows and the UI, the screens of uh, the application in landscape portrait, across languages, uh, across platforms, right? Every Just this week, Apple released two, uh, two new iPhones, right? right. Uh, we are mm -hmm. in the landscape of uh, iPhone 12, so four new devices. iOS 14.3 uh, is just around the corner, so the, the market keeps changing. You want to make sure that the functionality of your app is uh, perfect. But it's not really sufficient because uh, we live in the digital, digital world and we are exposed to real environment conditions. It can be interrupts like calls, alerts, text messages, pop-ups from security, different networks 
right? Uh, what Apple is saying, right? We are just now embracing 5G. Uh, I can tell you, you know, Karthik, you are in Australia, New Zealand. I think you are yeah. one of the first early adopters of 5G technology. Now it's yeah. becoming more broad in the US. But, you know, what happens when you are transitioning from a 4G LTE to a 5G to a Wi-Fi and vice versa? How does it impact your mobile performance and functionality? Uh, this is also important. What happens when you move from a background to the foreground? If it's a secure application, right, a banking application, uh, which I'm sure, Karthik, you are familiar with, right? Okay, what's happening when you are going in and out, taking the app to the foreground while you are logged in into the banking application, going back and receiving a call, things like that? These are things that must be tested in any test plan. And last but not least, all the non-functional testing from security to accessibility, performance, all of these things matter. And all of these things, when, uh, and you know, you know Kadik, I've wrote, written so many books by now about continuous testing. You know, this needs to be tested continuously uh, with this shift left concept of testing inside the sprint, inside the build process. So you really get the value from testing, but also provide the high feedback uh, fast to your developers. So if you want to summarize a nice testing plan in a slide for mobile, I would take this as a starting point. You're right. Yep. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. But if you want to make it more complicated, uh, you can put it in such a slide. And uh, this is how you kind of distribute my previous slide into a pipeline. Uh, let's say that's a day in the life of uh, a development team and a testing team, let's call them an agile or DevOps team. And here they are doing seven concurrent uh, pull requests a day. They have a noon build uh, and uh, they have a regression on a, nightly ba on a nightly basis. You can see here that uh, per each pull request, they have a 10 minute feedback. Uh, uh, in a noon build, they have one hour feedback loop and they have a nightly build of um, eight hours. And you can see in this slide how all of these test cases that I mentioned in the previous slide could be uh, spread through real devices, virtual devices like emulators and simulators, unit testing, you know, mix of test cases that you can build inside one hour feedback and obviously put some more content and scope into the nightly regression. But uh, I'll tell you that if you got to the nightly regression after doing at least one hour feedback in the noon, and did a 10 minute feedback smoke test, I think that you are, you are in a good position uh, from a risk mitigation perspective while you're already running your nightly regression. I think you are in a better chances of eliminating showstopper bugs and you have good success rates in your nightly cycle. So this is in my mind, a nice visualization of a DevOps pipeline, uh, taking the test plan that I shown in the previous slide, but kind of unfolding it into a pipeline, mixing different testing types as well as different mobile devices, real and virtual. So with that, let's become a bit more sophisticated and talk about the future, but the future is actually here already. So let's just talk a bit about what are the app clips and APKS and how they are going to change our lives because they are here. Uh, Apple released in iOS 14 uh, what they call app clips. So Karthik talk a bit, talked a bit earlier about PWA. So it's same, but a bit different. Uh, I will soon explain. Uh, and uh, Google are now uh, enforcing what they call APKS. APKS are going to be a zip file of set of uh, APK files that are going to be distributed across different devices based on developer and product requirements. I will touch on that pretty soon. So these two different application types are going, in my mind, to transform the way developers in the mobile space and testers are going to work in 2021. Let's start with APKS. APKS, as mentioned, are uh, kind of a zip, uh, are zip files, which consist of multiple single APK files. APK, for those of you who are in the mobile space, are the binaries for Android applications. Native Android applications are APK files. What Google are developing, or actually already developed, uh, is a format, a new format, uh, which is called APKS. It's a file.apks, which includes uh, 
can be unlimited, but let's say X amount of uh, APK files, each APK file is small and uh, matches a specific set of requirements. Can be uh, specific devices we'll get from the Google Play only that APK, other devices in different geographies, maybe with different languages and different maybe features that are exposed, will get a different APK and so on and so forth. So that's Google's way of distributing from the Google Play a set of Android applications which are smaller in size, but uh, they match the, uh, the actual end user requirements across the globe. Uh, what does it uh, serve? I will soon explain. What you can see here, maybe it's a bit blurry, is that by the second half of 2021, all of the Android applications that are this, uh, submitted to the Google Play will need to support APKS format. That's a mandatory requirement from Google. The benefits of such applications is, uh, you know, the flexibility. So if you think about back to uh, Karthik's point about progressive web, which are kind of a shortcut link that you can install on a device. So this is not a shortcut link, it's a native APK file, but you can easily distribute it. You know, you have a flexible, up, a flexible update or immediate update. Developers with this new format can push to the devices an immediate patch. They can expose uh, in a gradual mode a specific feature. They can enable or disable an existing feature and so on and so forth. And this is done by minimizing the size of the file. It's going to be a, a, lower, a smaller size of an APK. You can see it here, you know, uh, and you can learn more from, you know, the Google developer website on what it means. But uh, basically, uh, from a development and testing perspective, what developers and testers need to know about APKS, other than what I've just said, is that they need to better plan and scope the roadmap for Android, uh, Android applications going forward. Why? Because they now have the tools to really uh, expose differently their application features and functionalities, but also they need to be able to support different devices and different geographies in a different way. And this obviously impacts the way testing uh, is being performed. So again, you can see a launch checklist from Google in this URL. I recommend if you are in a mobile development space today or mobile test automation space, I re definitely recommend that you start getting familiar with this APKS technology because, you know, it's mandatory, it's not an optional thing, and it's not a trend. It's something that already is out there in the market. Uh, and Perfecto, I think uh, we got you, okay? So Perfecto already supports today uh, the format of APKS. Uh, our customers are already embracing this technology. So uh, as you can see here on my screen, you can see here the camera AP, uh, 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 APP. Uh, you see here that it's a zip file that has two different APK files. So uh, on a specific device, it will install one APK. On other device, it will install a different APK. It could have consisted of you know, 20 APKs depending on the developers. But uh, if you want to get started with that format and how to use it, with Perfecto, you can install and test the APKS on real or virtual devices. Um, this is just one example of how, how it works. Uh, any comments from you, Karthik? Have you ran into APKS already? Uh, not at all, Iran. This is this is really cool. I mean, um, uh, I could also really see that um, uh, while you t told that uh, Perfecto already have backed up this uh, feature, which is also going to be available. I mean, yet to come um, for most of the people who are going to use it. It is really awesome, and I am really excited to see this. Uh, how we can do the testing from Perfecto? Uh, yeah. Definitely, definitely. And, uh, you know, Google as Google, uh, you, you mentioned earlier the Flutter, so Google are also behind the APKS and they are very good at documenting things, so they have good guidelines. But Apple aren't standing still as well, so Apple, uh, as a contra to APKS, uh, recently uh, deployed what they call the app clips. And app clips are much closer to what we see as a progressive web because App Clips is not a full-blown native application. It's a shortcut. It can be a link. You can install it via NFC or a QR code. Uh, it can be a link that you get in an iMessage uh, in your iPhone device. 
Uh, it can be something that you embed as a card in your uh, Apple Maps, uh, et cetera, et cetera. What, is, uh, what does it mean? It means that, let's say you have a parking application and you just need to pay for the parking or something like that. You can get from a developer a short version of the native application. You don't need to go through the App Store. You don't need to install anything. You just get a subset of the app as a link or as a QR code, and you start engaging with that feature. It's a very specific thing, right? It's a very specific subset of the application that gives you a specific functionality. And by the way, at the end of the use case of this thing, you get the option to install. If you like it, if you think that you need more use cases of the app, you can definitely click on install and you will get to the App Store and download the full blown application. But if it's kind of a one time use of the application or a subset of that, app clips are there. And this is what uh, Apple are, uh, you know, introducing to the market uh, with th this uh, set of benefits. There are many other benefits, you know, it's a better user experience. It's a smaller subset of the application. It's uh, much more secure because it doesn't really use all the different security permissions that you might need from a full application, right? A native application might need to use your location and your camera and your contact list and, uh, you know, your audio and stuff like that. Well, a subset of that might use only, you know, the contact list or the location. So it's a bit more secure. Uh, again, it's a smaller size. And oh, by the way, after a set of time, it's time out and it gets removed automatically from your device. You don't need to uninstall that because it was never actually installed as an IPA. Okay. Wow, that's cool. So, so basically, it reduces the footprint of our app being installed on the on the devices. At the same time, because it's small in size, we can use if, if there is a place where we have low data, and we can directly use the app at any point of time, right? Exactly that. Exactly that, Karthik. And mm -hmm. um, cool. Apple, like Apple, gives you from the Xcode IDE all the abilities that you need to start building, uh, you know, a subset of these uh, iOS applications into app clips. You can use the built-in test flight uh, to deploy the test into a testing environment. You can use Perfecto as well. Uh, as a subject, I actually uh, took one application, I will soon show it uh, to you in a slide, but I actually took a gaming application and start playing with it uh, as an app clip in the cloud, in the Perfecto cloud on a real iPhone device, iPhone uh, 12 with iOS 14, by the way. Uh, and after I finished, you know, the first two uh, levels that came as a free, within the app clip, I got the pop-up that I need to install the full uh, application to continue, which is another way of using, uh, you know, or, or uh, getting adoption within the app. So it's all the other benefits plus, you know, a freemium uh, ability or benefit that you get with uh, uh, app clips. If you want, you can go to the developer apple.com and you can learn more about how to build an app clip from an existing IPA, how to test it, what are the, the best practices. Uh, you can see here that there are uh, six different methods of uh, uh, distributing an, I, uh, an iOS app clip, either through NFC tags, QR code, uh, Safari browsers, uh, placing cards in the maps, linking in the messages. A user will get a link in the message and he will click on that and will start using uh, using the, the app clip. As I mentioned, I just, uh, you can go to this website, by the way, uh, not during the webinar, you need to listen, but after the webinar, you can go to this uh, furygames.com, Phoenix2, and you will see that you have this link here uh, called play. You click on play, and it's a native application. You click on it and you start playing without really downloading on the App Store. Once you finish, you know, the first one or two levels of the game, you can continue and download the full blown native application from the App Store. So that's the nature of uh, App Clips. Wow, that's amazing. So this is a this is a very good uh, uh, idea to just give a shot and see how the application works and um, yeah, it helps everybody to do the testing and see how it works as well. Very cool. Definitely, definitely got it. And think about the journey here. The journey starts in uh, some cases not from a native app. So you talked about Appium and uh, you know XCY test for iOS. Here you're starting sometimes from a web view from a Safari browser. 
uh, and after that you just move to the native application so it's kind of a challenge to start testing the full journey from a small application clip through the full range of the native features and functionalities using either Appium and XUI test so here I've just listed a long set of uh, requirements from a test testing planning perspective, you know, looking at different device OS configurations, looking at different browsers, uh, different events happening while you're using the app clips, using different frameworks, like Appium and XCUI test, uh, and more and more. So uh, that's a new technology, uh, while Android APKs are a mandatory requirement for application developers, uh, app clips are not a mandatory requirement, but they are an opportunity for iOS developers to really get going and mature their application, get them more adopted, small in size, and so on and so forth. So this is about APKS and app clips. Uh, any comments uh, up until now before we move to PWA? I think I'm pretty good, um, Ron. That was awesome. Cool. Thank, thank you, Kadi. So now I'm going to double click on what you presented earlier on progressive web. And I think you said it all right. It's a uh, mobile application running from a browser. So it's kind of a super set of a responsive web, which get, gets a lot of benefits from the mobile native operating system, such as, uh, you know, uh, you have the service workers that you implement. And these are the things that gives you the uh, offline caching, re uh, registering the device and the application to push notifications, and many more access to different sensors of the device. And this is all happening from a shortcut, from a link. You don't need to install anything on the mobile device from the App Store or the Google Play. You just go, uh, in that case, you go to the Guardian in the UK, you go to the browser, and you add this link into your mobile device, whether it's an Android or an iOS. Um, Progressive Web works on Safari, Chrome, Edge, uh, all the different browsers, all the different operating systems. But what's happening is once you install the shortcut, add this shortcut uh, as a uh, link into your home screen on your mobile device, you immediately engage with the system, but getting some mobile native capabilities. In this case here, one of the benefits of P P Progressive Web is the offline caching. So let's say uh, you're downloading the Guardian and you lost connectivity. The Guardian already acknowledges and they, uh, through offline caching, allows you to, uh, you know, play with a crossword or something like that so to keep you online. eBay are doing the same. They are caching everything in their eBay progressive web. And even if you're using it from a mobile device and you lost connectivity, it will store and save your session uh, so you can continue with the purchase journey once you get the network connected back. So uh, to summarize, Progressive Web is obviously it's progressive. It works for every user like any responsive application. It's connectivity independent. It feels like a native app because it gets access to the mobile operating systems. It's safe like any other web application. It's HTTPS, obviously powered by Google, Microsoft, and Apple. It gives you the uh, SEO and all the other benefits of a web application, even though it's running on a mobile, like a native app. And you see here uh, from the medium.com, these are the three most uh, beneficial features that uh, the, the users of PWA voted as the most, uh, uh, you know, high value capabilities of such applications. So the push notifications, the caching and offline uh, storage, which got the highest score, and the ability to add to home screen without going through the App Store. So these are the key benefits of a PWA. From an architecture perspective, uh, as I mentioned, you have a service worker. It's a JavaScript code that you implement, which takes care of all the push notifications, the, cache, the caching of uh, the web uh, application, uh, working with all the sensors and sending all the different events and stuff like that. So that's the brain of a PWA. And the manifest JSON file is basically the descriptor of the application. Like you see here, uh, it gives you the home URL. It gives you the look and feel of the PWA, the icon colors and stuff like that. 
Installing, as I mentioned, you go to Twitter. Twitter is a PWA. You go from your Safari on iOS or Chrome from Android, and you add to home screen. That's how you install a PWA on your mobile device. And once you install that, you have this link on the device, and you can start playing with that without really going through any app stores. It's pretty cool, right? I mean, uh, we don't even have to actually um, install the app, but basically it looks like an installation, but it, uh, but in fact it is just like a little bit footprint uh, compared to the, the actual app itself. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pa yeah. and the, the, the power of that is that uh, it runs uh, from the browser. It's a superset of the Safari browser with uh, extended permissions to the operating system so it can control you know, these push things, the contact list, working with camera and audio. You know, you, you can see uh, PWA application that can record audio, voice memos, or scan calls from the camera. So think about it. It's a web application that gets access to all these native operating system abilities, which is awesome. Uh, so yeah. that's, uh, that's kind of a cool uh, technology, which is becoming more and more adopted by many sites. I mentioned Twitter, Instagram, eBay, and you can find more and more uh, applications that are transitioning from responsive web towards progressive. If you want to learn how to test PWA after attending this webinar and more, you can go to Google. Uh, Google has this PWA checklist, the 11 PWA quality metrics that you can go. I won't go to each and every one, but you have that in the presentations. They are quite easy to understand. You have the lighthouse from Google that gives you the audit and the ability to get kind of the scoring of a progressive web from both performance, security, uh, SEO, and the uh, service workers uh, functionality, and many more. What you do need to take into consideration when you are testing a progressive web is that, as I mentioned many times by now, it's a superset of a responsive web. So everything that you are testing, these are the six boxes for a responsive web. You know, you want to test across platform because it's responsive. You want to test visual. You want to test the functionality of your web application. You want to test the performance, accessibility, and stuff like that. So all of these packs are still relevant, but they are now uh, requiring you to test six additional uh, boxes, and these are the PWA manifest, the service worker, the specific capabilities like add to home screen across different browsers uh, and stuff like that. And the test automation is also a bit challenging because Appium on its own, it's, it's quite challenging for him to test the PWA because again, like I mentioned earlier in the app clips, the journey of a PWA starts from the browser. And uh, Kartik mentioned earlier, Selenium is the automation for web, Appium is the automation for mobile, and this is kind of a, a hybrid uh, new type of application, and you need to start the journey with a web view, uh, and Appium doesn't really uh, help you that much because it needs to initiate the application and stuff like that. Uh, what I've done, you know, I've created here's kind of a summary of references and some pitfalls and how to get started, but instead of Going through that, let me just run a short video demo that I have recorded in the, uh, in the Perfecto Cloud showing you how to test a PWA uh, with Appium and Perfecto. So I'm going to just start the video now. Hey, this is a demo of testing progressive web applications within the Perfecto uh, Cloud. In this demo, we are going to test the Trivago progressive web application and show you how it can run on two iOS devices. Uh, to do so, we have implemented this progressive web test class in Java. We configured in a test ng two devices, two iOS devices on which it's going to test. And from a testing perspective, we obviously provided the security token for the Perfecto Cloud and the Cloud URL. But most important, from a test perspective, we are going to launch the progressive web application uh, uh, for Trivago. That's the Trivago website. We're going to go to the Trivago.com. We are then going to add uh, as a native app the Trivago uh, progressive web as a shortcut to the iOS real device home screen. Then we're going to launch the progressive web application and through uh, different commands, uh, we're going to uh, uh, perform few actions 
on the uh, Trivago application, make some searches on this application, and most important, at the end, we are going to remove uh, the progressive web link uh, from the iOS devices. Everything that is going to run here, and I'm going to launch the test right now, is going to be done in the Perfecto Cloud. At the end of the execution, you're going to get a full report with all the steps, screenshots, and video recording. Uh, again, everything is happening in the cloud. So as the execution uh, is moving on, uh, again, I just want to show you uh, what we're going to do. We're going to go to the trivago.com, launch the app, perform some actions on the app, and remove the shortcut. Let's go to the Perfecto reporting since the execution is completed now. And what you can see is that two reports were created on the iPhone 11 and on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Uh, let's just pick one. These are the same tests running on two iOS devices. So let's pick this uh, uh, report and we can run the video recording so you can see all the different steps. As you can see now, the, the execution is uh, about to complete. The Trivago Progressive Web was installed on the device. You saw it through the add to home screen. We launched it, we performed some action, and then after we are done, we are going to remove the PWA from the device. These are two uh, actions that are quite complicated to do. Uh, you can do it now, uh, both the testing on Android and iOS uh, with the Perfecto commands and uh, Appium solution. With that, let's uh, just see the PWA icon being removed, the application being removed from uh, the device, as you can see it right now. And with that, we'll end the demo. Cool, so what we have seen right now, we have seen uh, the PWA in action. What I want to also show you uh, right now is also, uh, and you will soon see it. I want to show you a bit about the Perfecto platform. The Perfecto platform is a continuous testing solution, uh, fully SaaS, cloud-based, that allows you to do few things. It allows you to do manual testing, test automation. I will soon show you a demo of test automation and an advanced machine learning based test analysis that can examine all of the reports like you have seen in the PWA demo. Uh, it gives you also the ability to set up uh, and manage all the users in the cloud. The way it works, you can look at all the different mobile devices that are connected uh, to, the, to, to the cloud. You can see it here, you have both iOS and Android devices, all are real devices connected with SIM cards and audio connectivity, as well as virtual devices. If I want, I can launch, uh, let's say, uh, an iPhone 11 Pro. While I'm doing that, I can go and launch an Android uh, device as well. Uh, I'll try my luck with a Samsung Galaxy S10e. So right now, I'm launching two real devices in the Perfecto Cloud. I can control them. I can do swipes, all the gestures. I can also look at the different objects. There, there is an object spy that is part of the tool. I can go to the iTunes store, for example. I can click on the, the icon. You can see all the XUI test elements of the screen of the application, and it's a ramp up to your automation. Uh, in addition, I can take a screenshot, okay? Uh, I can inject an image if I want. To the, to the device, so if let's say I want to check a deposit, uh, to do a check deposit, sorry, or in a banking application, I can inject an image. I can uh, do a, a screen rotation, I will call the, the object spy. 
uh, I can go here and do a file transfer from the device. Let's say I uh, collected something on my device and I want to move it back and forth. I can do it here. Everything and anything that you can do within a real device, you can do here. I can inject location, uh, card secure now in New Zealand. So I can uh, mimic that this device right now is in New Zealand and I can actually check my responsiveness and anything that is related to this device in this location. I can check biometrics, face ID and fingerprint. You know, this device is new, so it has only face ID. If it had a fingerprint, I would have the ability to test fingerprint. I can also check network conditions. I can select a different profile on the device, 3G, 4G, and so on, and check my overall user experience. Okay, you can see more and more. Uh, this is the inject audio. Uh, so this is few things that you can do manually on the iOS device. Similarly, I can do the same thing on the Samsung device on the Android. Again, here you can do all the gestures. You can see the performance. Uh, it's very fast. This is a real device connected. You can see it here. It's in the Boston. Uh, actually, no, it's in Canada. It's in Toronto, in our data center in Toronto. It's a device running Android 10. You can see it here, the, the Appium desired capabilities. I can get them in JavaScript. I can get them in Python, Ruby, all the, all the different language bindings that Karthik was mentioning earlier with Appium. You can get them here. You can copy them from here to the IDE and start doing automation with Appium immediately. So this is the automation that you can do on Appium. You can install an application uh, and instrument that, run it, do whatever you want from a manual perspective. But that's on a manual uh, front. If I want to test my responsive web, for example, I can also launch my, uh, let's say, Chrome on Windows 10, uh, Chrome 86 in Australia, close to you, Kartik. And uh, now I'm launching a real browser, a real virtual machine browser on the Chrome, uh, but in a different data center. And I can start working on the browser uh, uh, from just here, I can type cnn.com, for example, and uh, I can start testing uh, this website uh, in the Australia data center that we have. So this is how, uh, you know, the platform works for manual testing. But this is not good enough. It's perfect, but I just want to show you before we go back also what you can do with automation. So in the Perfecto Cloud, you can also run, this is my IntelliJ. I have a, a Selenium script for the responsive website called uh, the Boston Globe. You can see here all the different configurations, Chrome, Chrome Latest, Latest Minus Two, uh, mobile devices, and all of these configurations are going to test, uh, you know, the website of the Boston Globe. They're going to test the registration of this website. They're going to input different credentials, my name and stuff like that, and test the functionality. It's driven by test and G, okay? This is testing the test home delivery, and I'm going to run it from here. We won't wait for the full-blown execution, but I just want to show you how you can run with Perfecto at scale across so many different configurations, web and mobile. You can see here the test being distributed into so many different uh, you know, uh, web drivers. Each and every web driver is now being uh, created, connected to the cloud. I will now go back to the cloud and I will go to the reporting platform. Okay, this is the analyze report. And I will now open the live stream. We also have CI dashboard, so you can see all the CI, all the Jenkins jobs. But I will just go to the live stream and you can start seeing uh, how many platforms are being populated with the Boston Globe uh, being tested, okay? So this is how you would test a responsive web at scale with Perfecto in Java. I showed you previously PWA with Appium. I'm showing you right now Selenium on a responsive web, and you've seen the live testing. So this is a continuous testing platform for web and mobile that can really help you uh, assure quality for all your digital experiences. So I want... Um, wait for the full completion. I will just pick, you know, one report just so you can see uh, that was uh, what was running. So you can see here in the test on delivery, uh, the full video, okay? You can see what was tested. You get the full screenshot step by step of the execution and also the recorded video of the test 
on this uh, configuration, which is a Windows 10 with uh, running on Chrome, or what is that, on uh, a different browser, Beta 83. So this is the full test that was recorded. If I found an issue, I can uh, report a bug in Jira, and so on and so forth. So this is just a, a, a brief demo of the platform, and uh, I'll end the screen share, and let's go back to wrapping up this uh, webinar. Uh, before we close, you have seen the demo, so Perfecto, just a word about Perfecto to close this webinar. So Perfecto is a continuous testing solution, helping you create test automation, execute them at scale in the cloud in different geographies with a smart reporting and analytics uh, uh, that gives you really a single pane of glass for everything that was executed. With that, I would like to thank you for being in this webinar and let's leave some time for questions that came in. Shelby, do we have any questions? Yes, we do. Uh, the first question from the audience asks, how will Flutter transform the way applications are built natively? Karthik, this is for you. You're the Flutter expert. Um, yeah, so uh, I think um, the the way that we can actually uh, we can actually uh, test the flutter or maybe how we can uh, build the application I could able to see is that uh, uh, most of the companies at least in the New Zealand I could see that uh, the companies which were using the uh, react native or the ionic application were actually uh, transforming into uh, Flutter driver, I mean Flutter itself, because Flutter seems to be a very fast way of developing the application. Uh, that is the major thing, that's the major take most of the companies think, because uh, the way uh, the components that is available on the Flutter itself is uh, super customizable, and every single component on the Flutter is actually an widget, uh, and that's the reason the developers find developing applications on Flutter much, much easier, uh, and I think that's how the Flutter is really transforming the way uh, the applications are being built, uh, especially natively, I'm saying, because um, because iOS or Android, the pain of developing the application uh, uh, using the JavaScript bridge was actually, I mean, very costly. But uh, in terms of Flutter, uh, those gaps are really, really gone. And, uh, and I could see that uh, the Flutter is really changing the landscape of the mobile uh, app development. Uh, uh, but I, I don't still uh, want to give a lot of details on the testing side of Flutter uh, in terms of the Flutter driver because Appium doesn't really support it yet. But uh, I think there are some works going on uh, on it. But in terms of the application building using Flutter, uh, Flutter is looking pretty promising and many companies are really, really uh, trying to adapt to it. Yeah. And thank you so much for the question, uh, uh, guys. And thanks for that, Iran. Sure. Uh, any other questions, Shelby? Yep. Uh, another question asks, how are app clips in iOS going to make testers' life complicated, as these are two different apps now? I think, Iran, you are the best person to answer this question. Uh, sure. Um, so as we saw, you know, in this webinar, the app clips and uh, uh, APKS are a new way of developing uh, applications. So the entire life cycle of creating these applications is going to be different, right? You're going to build using these ADB tools and stuff like that, the APKS into a zip file, a big zip file, and you then need to see how it's really deployed into the Google Play and how you update a specific uh, APK, which is part of this big zip file that impacts a set of users in a specific geography or on a specific set of devices. So while all the benefits exist, you also need to think about, you know, really how you're going to maintain and support this new uh, way of uh, consuming mobile applications. And same goes with app clips. You have seen uh, the benefits, but uh, obviously there are going to be challenges. So to the question, it's going to be uh, quite impactful on uh, both developers and testers. I believe that in the webinar, I provided you some best practices uh, on top of what Apple and Google are recommending. So I would suggest to start with that. But yeah, that, these are things that are going to disrupt by, def by default, you know, everything that is going on from both development and testing perspective uh, for native uh, mobile applications. 
All right. Um, our next question asks, how effective will the testing of Appium be for modern apps? Karthik, you want to take that? Um, I think, Aran, you, you are the right person because you showed us the demo on the on the Appium side. Um, so, uh, yeah. Sure. How do you want to? Yeah. So I, I, I can take that. So from from an Appium perspective, I think that you know Appium is the selenium of mobile, and it's not going away. Appium is uh, becoming stronger and stronger. I think you know Kartik was saying about AI with Appium. Uh, I know that one of my friends, Jason Albon uh, from Test.ai, is investing time in putting the visual AI aspects on top of Appium. So Appium is becoming modern as we speak. Uh, it's gone a long way. Uh, over the past five, six years now. And, uh, you know, the only thing that I think Appium is, uh, you know, I wouldn't say suffering, but it depends very heavily on the native framework, such as Espresso for Android and XUI for iOS. So in cases of uh, Apple breaking XUI test, which Appium is dependent on, Appium would have a problem. So Appium is always dependent on the underlying native frameworks coming from the different always vendors and that's uh, kind of a limitation but you know that's the only way for you if you want to test across platforms and to end testing across android and ios appium today is the only uh, code based framework for that so i think it's still going to dominate dominate the market going forward uh, you know it has so many bindings to so many languages uh, so i think the future is quite bright for appium but there are AI codeless tools that are emerging that are going to challenge Appium. So Appium needs to continue maturing, innovating, so it will be ready for the future. Great. I think the last uh, question that we'll have time for today is, what are your thoughts on the future of Xamarin? That's yours, Kautik. I think. Karthik, do you have a comment, uh, a response to, uh, you know, the future of Xamarin uh, from my Microsoft? Uh, yes, uh, Iran, can you hear me well? Yes, I can. Yes. Okay, cool. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, all right. I think I was on mute. So, uh, so Xamarin is definitely one thing which I really like because um, from the time while Xamarin was acquired uh, by Microsoft uh, and while Dotted was still in an infant stage of not running on a cross-platform, Xamarin was very interesting and many people are still uh, using Xamarin for developing the applications, and uh, it is again one one of the platform which runs natively on uh, Mac, Windows. Um, uh, I mean, it, there was a Windows operating system before, but now it is like Linux, uh, uh, iOS, and Android. Uh, but actually, there are so many futuristic improvements also planned. Uh, it seems from Microsoft because the way they released the .NET 5, they told that the, dot, uh, the Xamarin is going to be getting a, a heavy uh, feature updates in .NET 6, uh, and there is also going to be a lot of improvement in terms of the speed and performance of uh, the Xamarin because now everything is .NET uh, core and .NET Core is now transformed into .NET uh, 5 and upcoming 6. So the future of Xamarin uh, does look like pretty uh, interesting. And I'm pretty excited because um, uh, Xamarin.UI test is one of the tech stack which I uh, really follow along a lot. And uh, I have a courses on that as well. And it, it's really interesting to see how uh, Microsoft is going to improve that and uh, what changes are going to come in uh, for Xamarin. Yeah, so the future definitely looks pretty bright. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Karthik. And I know that on the website, uh, Microsoft are also investing these days in Playwright. So there are a lot of things coming on the testing space, not just on development for Microsoft, which is cool. Yes. Uh, Shelby and Karthik, before we wrap up, I, again, I, I mentioned that uh, we put in this uh, slide deck a bonus section on uh, testing foldable. So I just want to uh, re remind you guys after the webinar, go and uh, move slide by slide after the Q&A so you get some more testing strategies on what to consider when you're testing on foldable smartphones, uh, because it's also a reality and something to look to look at uh, into the future. Uh, but uh, with that, I would like uh, to wrap up the webinar uh, and thank all of you, especially uh, Karthik, thank you for joining me in this webinar and uh, providing your insights. Um,
Thank Before you so much, Aaron. Thank you so much for having me uh, for this conference. It was awesome. Very insightful. Sure, the pleasure was all mine. And thank you, everyone, for being with us. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you in the next webinar. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Aaron.